So my, my name is Eva Kocinska. I have the pleasure together with the team uh, run the NCBR office in Brussels, which is the National Center for Research and Development, Polish RNA funding agency. And uh, together with our colleagues from uh, Hungarian, uh, Lithuanian and Slovenian office, we are organizing a series of different events uh, to convince as many participants, pos potential applicants, researchers, entrepreneurs, depending on the program, to participate in uh, and what the uh, European Commission has to offer and also some other organizations. And today our topic is uh, cost. And we will be very happy to see more participants uh, from uh, our countries, but uh, but also from uh, in general from, from all over Europe uh, to take part in the currently open call. And that's why we are we are meeting now uh, to give you enough time to prepare your uh, action proposals for October. Um, uh, and we have this tradition to also say a few words in our languages uh, for, as a as a welcome. Uh, so I will switch uh, very shortly to uh, to Polish and then give the floor to uh, to my colleagues. Uh, Dzień dobry Państwu, bardzo się cieszymy, że tak szeroko są Państwo z nami w takim szerokim gronie, bardzo dużo rejestracji, liczymy na to, że polscy naukowcy zaaplikują do programu COST w jak największej liczbie i z jak największym sukcesem i zachęcamy też do kontaktu z nami. Tadas, the floor is yours now. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Tadas Tumenas, and I represent Lithuanian R&D Liaison Office here in Brussels, also known as Lina Office. And as Eva mentioned already, so following our tradition, I will switch to the Lithuanian language and say a few words. Labas rytas, visiems prisijungusiems prie Lino biuro ir partnerių organizuojamo renginio apie Europos bendradarbiajimo iniciatyvą Mokslo ir technologijų srityje COST. Ir šio renginio metu ne tik sužinosite apie pačią kostų iniciatyvą, bet taip pat ir išgirsite dalyvių patirtį. Todėl linkiu jums įdomios diskusijos ir aktyvaus dalyvavimo. And now I'm switching back to English and passing the floor to my colleague Bernard. Bernard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tadas. Uh, I'm Bernard Moritz from the Slovenian Business and Research Association. Uh, I would also like to now briefly say some words in Slovenian to our colleagues who joined today. Ali po pozdravljen in dobrodošli vsi skupi. Nas veseli, da ste se nam danes pridružili na današnjem dogodku na temu Evropskega sodelovanja v znanosti in tehnologiji in upamo, da boste zvedeli veliko korisnih informacij. Če imate kakršno okolje vprašanjega, lahko napišete v klepet, ko tudi po dogodku na naš elektronski naslov na SBRA in bo bomo z veseljem pomagali. Uh, thank you very much. And now I'm passing on to Orsolja. Hello, good morning. My name is Orsia Lugmajer and I represent Otvashmanend University and Corvinus University from Hungary, from Budapest, here in Brussels. And I'm switching to Hungary. Szeretettel üzvözlöm Önöket, én Lugmajer Orsia vagyunk, az Otvashmanend Tudomány Egyetemet és a Corvinus Egyetemet képviselem Brüsszelben. Nagyon örülünk, hogy én sokan tudtak csatlakozni ez a rendezvényhez, és reméljük, hogy jó lehetőségeket látnak arra, hogy pályázzanak majd a jövőben. Now I'm switching back to English and give the floor to Agata, to my colleague Agata David. Thank you so much, Orsi. So as you can see, there are two of us from Hungary. I'm representing the National Research Development and Innovation Office, uh, but I'm working as a science attaché uh, in Brussels. So I also shortly switch to Hungarian, but then I will be the moderator of the very first uh, part of the meeting. So I will come back to you very soon. Én is mindenkit nagy szeretettel üdvözlök, nagyon remélem, hogy sok magyar kollega részt tud venni, mert nagyon úgy gondoljuk Orsival közösen és a kollégákkal, hogy a koszt egy kiváló lehetőség a tudományos hálózatokba való bekerülése, és ezen, ezeken keresztül aztán pedig a keretprogramban való részvételre, úgyhogy mindenkit külön is szeretném buzdítani arra, hogy minél aktívabb szerepet vállaljanak a koszt hálózatokban. So I'm back to everybody now. Uh, and uh, I also want to just highlight uh, the housekeeping rules. There are not many, so you can either switch on your or switch off your camera. If you have some problems with your connections, then you can also, of course, switch it off. But we are happy to see you, of course. Uh, and as uh, Eva already indicated in the chat, uh, we usually collect the questions uh, because there are many of you, luckily. 
but we collect the questions in the chat. So, so please uh, write any of your questions there. We already received some questions in advance, so we will start with those. But then uh, certainly we, we will try to ask as many as possible. Of course, we have uh, time limitations. And this is why <laughs> this time limitation issue. So I, I will just very shortly introduce our uh, two speakers now, and I will give them the floor to start with their presentation. So the, we have two colleagues from Costa now today. So we are happy to welcome bo both Bart Weiss, who is head of the policy unit, and also Katalin Alföldi, who is a global networking task leader. Uh, so they will present jointly what you should really know about Cost, how to network there, how to build your own network, how to create, uh, and how to uh, profit of uh, their additional services, because Cost is not just, no, it's already a lot, but it's not only uh, creating networks so I'm sure that you will know far more after uh, their presentation uh, and please feel free to raise your questions then during already when they are talking and then after uh, their uh, presentation we will have a short Q&A and then we move uh, towards the panel discussion as the second part of our meeting so please Bart and Katalin the floor is yours uh, and thank you very much for joining us today Yes, thank you very much, Agatha and, and colleagues uh, around Europe. Uh, we're joining you from Grey Brussels, so I hope wherever you join that, uh, that the weather is slightly better. Uh, but anyway, we're here to present uh, the cost and I got out myself very much look forward to, to engage with you uh, and to, to present the cost scheme. And uh, we look forward to, to your questions and then hopefully maybe we see you around in, in cost actions uh, later on. So for, um, let's say, easy purposes, I will share my own screen and then um, when Kata starts present, uh, presenting, she will share her screen. I think that's a bit more smooth. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Perfect. It's still not in the presentation mode now. Yes, now it's also in presentation mode. Perfect. Good. Very. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot for organizing this this info moment. I think um, we, we have a very nice group here uh, and, and, a, and a very set of interesting countries. Uh, I will show a bit of statistics on, on, on how you participate also in cost actions. So what I will do, I will uh, talk about the general, um, let's say more strategic objectives of cost, uh, more cost in general, uh, where we are situated within the framework program. And Kata will go more into depth into what are cost actions and how you can uh, then uh, I think that's the most important part, participate in, in our cost actions. So that's, that's the, the, the taste of our presentation today, which will be shared uh, with you uh, as well afterwards. So no, no need to take pictures or screenshots along the way, but you will be then uh, to have your time at ease to, to look at it uh, afterwards as well, if you would like to have more information. So uh, about cost and its strategic priorities. So cost is um, stands for the European Cooperation in Science and Technology, and we provide networking opportunities. So this is something you see clearly in our mission. That's important to know from the start. So we offer networking, um, let's say, schemes to, to researchers and innovators across Europe in order to strengthen uh, Europe's capacity to address scientific, technological and societal challenges. So and our vision is to become uh, Europe's most empowering uh, research program because we're not, let's say, a sole funder of giving um, let's say money to researchers and then um, see them four years later after their, their reports. Now we really try to empower uh, researchers along the way in their cost action and this will become clear uh, throughout the presentations um, in what kind of way we're trying to do that. We have three strategic priorities which are a bit more um, detailed also on this slide. So the first one is promoting and spreading excellence. Cost is really uh, about um, say tapping into the pockets of excellence across Europe. So COST is a very inclusive program, and this will also be explained to you uh, later on. Uh, but the, the idea, the principal idea of a COST action always starts with excellence. So uh, we welcome proposals uh, and they go through an evaluation scheme. Uh, and through this, we really try to connect, uh, let's say the pockets of excellence uh, in Europe, uh, in, in our program, in the tool we have available for you, which, which is the COST actions. Um, the second priority is fostering interdisciplinarity research for breakthrough science. So cost has a bottom up call, so every proposal is welcome and this uh, automatically leads to a lot of interdisciplinary uh, research proposals, uh, which then also end up in, in rather uh, very much interdisciplinary actions. So uh, we have actions 
um, where a lot of disciplines come together. And this is because we don't have a pre-descriptive call where um, one topic needs to be addressed. But due to the openness of our open call, um, we, we have, let's say, a tendency to attract very interdisciplinary proposals and, and then leading to cost actions. And the third strategic priority is empowering and retaining young researchers. So cost is, is a, an, an open tool. Uh, so once a consortium is, is funded, um, uh, and, and starts as a cost action, uh, researchers across Europe are still able to join this cost action. This will be explained in more detail. And this leads to a very open, an open, uh, let's say, uh, program where a lot of young researchers also find their way rather easily. Uh, and if you compare to, let's say, the more um, closed consortia, if you can call it like that, in Horizon Europe projects, uh, we are rather open, and this we see also in, in terms of, uh, let's say, the benefits we create uh, along the way for, for younger researchers. So these are strategic priorities which we currently have in our strategic plan and which guide us a bit uh, in, in the European research area. So cost is completely funded by the uh, framework program by Horizon Europe, but we have a membership uh, which is based on intergovernmental structure. So we have 41 cost members. Uh, one cooperating member and one partner member, and you see the let's say the color division as well on this map. Uh, I think that resonates a bell to to most of you. That's uh, we follow let's say the, the widening uh, categorization of countries um, uh, across Europe, uh, but but really with the main ambition, and that's what promoting and spreading excellence is about to connect, uh, let's say both sides uh, of Europe and and. To make the platform and the cost actions as inclusive as possible, so everyone uh, joins at an equal basis within within uh, our networks. Uh, we have one partner member, uh, which is uh, South Africa. Um, there are more on the list, but for the moment, it's uh, South Africa. We also have. Um, so the cost near neighbor countries, which are around uh, Europe, and they can also participate um, in, in cost action. So I'm not talking about. Um, countries like Tunisia, Morocco, and so on. So they are also part of the, of the cost family, let's say, not of the governance structure, but they can on equal terms participate in, in cost actions. So cost in Horizon Europe, so we are part, uh, full part of the widening participation in strengthening the European uh, research pillar. So that's a horizontal pillar uh, focusing on, on making the, yeah, let's say, the European research area stronger. Um, and we have a specific uh, and a, a framework partnership agreement with um, with the European Commission. So we receive a grant from the European Commission and we cascade that money to the cost actions under third party funding through an open call, which uh, Kata will explain in more detail. So that, that's how we work. So the cost strategic priorities are, are of course, implemented by a wide diversity of tools. Um, so what you see here in the middle of the circle are the cost action and the cost action tools. Um, so these are the tools researchers have at their disposal um, in order to, to connect and to meet and to collaborate on a specific research topic uh, within the frame of their cost action. So if you look at these tools, the, you really see it's, it's about the networking. So we organize meetings, uh, training schools. You can go on short-term scientific missions. Then we have uh, money available for dissemination activities. We also have virtual networking grants. Uh, which uh, allow you to organize conferences uh, from home or from your home office. Uh, so these are the tools cost actions have available. This will also be explained in a bit more detail uh, afterwards. But what we try to do and what I also mentioned before in uh, empowering researchers is to really try to um, to create as much as possible impact together with the cost actions by a set of um, tools which we organize centrally at the cost association. So here in Brussels. So, for example, on the top, you see the Cost Academy, which is um, an academy for uh, researchers uh, who are part of a cost action and would like to um, be trained on, on a very diverse set of topics which have a link in um, or, or which are beneficial in managing uh, European research grants. It's about, uh, for example, on science communication, it's on grant management, it's on leadership training, it's on how to engage with policymakers. So if you're part of a cost action, you can also join these trainings and get trained on a, a wide variety of, of topics, uh, which, which will help you later on, not only in the cost action, but also uh, in, in your career if you're, uh, let's say, continuing with, with being part of European projects. Uh, we have a Cost Innovators Grant, which is an add-on grant. Um, 
uh, for cost actions who are finished and, and would like to explore more innovation potential. So that's also something we offer uh, on top of, of, let's say, the usual networking instruments. Uh, we engage with uh, policymakers uh, in Brussels. Uh, this is referring to cost site informed policy advice. We have uh, a memorandum of understanding with the JRC, for example, also with the EIT, uh, where we try to make sure that the activities and the work the cost actions do are not uh, let's say uh, put on the shelf and, and not looked at it anymore. So we really try to take them by the hand and try to get them engaged with, with policymakers in Brussels in order to, to express, uh, let's say, their scientific results so that this has, let's say, a long lasting impact uh, on policy level as well. We focus on global networking. Kata is, is let's say, the expert on this. So I will, if, if you want to say a bit more on this, I will, I will leave that to her. Uh, we also have uh, Cost Connect events uh, where we gather groups of cost actions and we connect them with Brussels-based stakeholders. For example, yesterday, um, we had a, a Cost Connect uh, event on water. Uh, so then we invite the JPIs, uh, we invite Water Europe, we invite uh, the EIT, the European Commission. And then we offer the opportunity to uh, the group of cost actions uh, to network with, uh, let's say, the Brussels based stakeholders. So you see that in general, we fund, let's say, the networking uh, tools you see in the middle of this picture, but we try to um, also create a bit of stewardship towards the action with uh, several added value activities. So um, that's a bit our philosophy uh, within um, within our work, uh, what we do here at the Cost Association. So if you talk about cost actions, to give you a order of magnitude, we have at the moment 292 running cost actions. So these are uh, networks uh, with, with on average 250 researchers. Um, and uh, on average, uh, 30 countries are involved in these actions. And on a yearly basis, so this is for one year, we uh, we engage more than 50,000 researchers. So um, meaning that they're involved in one of the activities uh, of the cost actions. Um, there's quite a share of young researchers active, uh, as I said before. So 42% of the participants in cost are young researchers. And also we have, uh, as we're part of the widening pillar in Horizon Europe, uh, an ambition to be, let's say, inclusive towards the, the whole of Europe. Um, so in, in general, there's uh, an average of 19 uh, number of widening countries per cost action present. Uh, we also focus on, on gender, uh, gender equality within the actions, and 52% of the leadership positions, positions are occupied by female researchers. So this is something, so these numbers, uh, we're very proud of and, and this shows in a way that cost uh, we have the motto we're about inclusive excellence that we really try to uh, to strive for for these uh, let's say objectives and these are shown in these numbers so the average annual budget of a cost action is around 134,000 euros it's around 600,000 euros uh, over the lifetime of an action which is for four years as you know this is not the biggest money in, in let's say in horizon uh, europe uh, projects or schemes but this is purely to to network with each other it's to uh, to come together to organize meetings uh, to do training schools and and so on so this is um a, a bit of uh, let's say cost in numbers and and then i've added some some graphs on uh, let's say uh, your country participation uh, be aware of the scale uh, of these um of these graphs, but you see that this, uh, what I wanted to show with this, there's an increasing trend of all of your four, four countries uh, in participation in cost. So this shows, uh, let's say, the country involvement in all of the actions. And you see Slovenia participates in around 87% of the cost actions, Lithuania in 75%, Hungary in 80%, and Poland uh, in 98% of the cost actions. Of course, you have to take into account the size of the research community. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to to highlight with these graphs, uh, with these graphs, is that there's an increasing trend and an increasing interest within all of your countries in order to participate in in cost actions. And it doesn't mean if if your country is at the top of, let's say, or involved in all the actions that you cannot longer participate. No, the beauty of cost is that it is an open scheme, and every year we of course fund new actions as well. So um, cost actions lead to a lot of impact, uh, which um, I mean, I think is quite uh, understandable for you being, I think most of you researchers or research managers, that cost actions lead to, to research outputs, to, to new standards, to new infrastructures, to, to, to new knowledge, to new uh, scientific results, uh, to publications. So th th these are the usual, uh, let's say, impacts and outputs we see at cost actions. Uh, what we also see is an increased, uh, let's say, 
um, yeah, career advancement. So that if you participate in a cost action, you meet people within your scientific field across Europe. So that is very valuable, uh, especially for young researchers. Suddenly you have access to, to all of the, the peers you maybe only know from publications, but now you have met uh, within the frame of your cost actions and with whom you have collaborated. So, so these are two very tangible impacts uh, and, and outputs of our activities. So, so the scientific results and, and let's say the career opportunities. And what we're also very proud of is that um, many cost actions um, lead to follow-up funding. Because if you put the researchers in a room, they talk about their research, but they always also talk about, okay, what's next and what is available um, in terms of research funding. Uh, and then we see that follow-up proposals um, in the costs um, of coming from cost actions and applying to Horizon Europe schemes, we have a follow-up uh, success rate of more than 39%. We know this because these actions all report to us and have to um, indicate whether or not they have applied for, for additional grants and, and we see a success rate of 39%. So uh, on a yearly basis, uh, 60 actions end. Um, and on average, there's around 5.8 million spin-off funding per cost action. And we did the calculation in Horizon Europe. So 2.6 billion of the awarded grants in Horizon Europe uh, were initiated from, from cost actions. So uh, this is something in which we're uh, very proud of. This is also uh, very well recognized by, by the European Commission. Uh, that cost is really a kind of a pre-portal um, to, to um, that do research funding and, and often leads them to spin off, um, let's say, spin off projects uh, resulting from, from cost actions. And I think this is this is very uh, has to do with the fact that in a cost action, you work together for four years, you know who to trust, who to work with, the strengths of other colleagues, of other uh, research groups, and this automatically leads to successful, um, let's say, follow up uh, funding. So that was my part, it was very short, um, a bit of a general introduction. I will now stop uh, sharing my screen and give the floor to my colleague, uh, Kata, who will go more into depth of the cost actions and how to how to participate. Thank you very much, Bart. Um, um, so pick it up where you left. Um, I hope you can see the slides. Yes, not in the presentation. Yeah. Yes, now it is perfect. Okay, thank you. So my name is Katalina Alfredi. I'm a policy advisor at the Cost Association, and I'm uh, really happy and uh, um, I'm very very happy that we can uh, have a whole event organized by uh, the distinguished colleagues um, um, dedicated to to cost, because um, I'm a great believer that this uh, scheme that we are managing here from um, from our offices, it is really something that uh, makes uh, sense um, and can be a, a, gate, a great uh, catalysator uh, for uh, your careers uh, and engagement with um, further uh, partners in Europe. And in order to illustrate that, I just before going into the the, the very technical slides, I just want to. Uh, provide a testimonial. I know that there will be live testimonials uh, soon, but someone that was um, uh, at our ministerial meeting a couple of years ago uh, and uh, from Poland, Krakow, and who um, is a researcher um, from there, Ursula Stachewicz, uh, who got an ERC grant um, thanks to her involvement in a cost action. So this is something that um, Worth, worth knowing, um, and I hope that it further increases the appetite that Bart already, uh, I hope, gave you uh, in his with his speech. So then, what are we talking about? What is this uh, beautiful animal that we call cost action, and uh, how does it work, and what does it do actually? Um, this is uh, the cost actions. This is our jargon. How we call the projects that we are funding. These are networks. Network. This is a networking tool. Uh, which provides um, the, the, the frame and the funding for uh, pooling resources and capacity building. So it doesn't fund the research itself, but it funds the coordination of research. It is a project um, based on a memorandum of understanding of countries uh, rep uh, represented in a cost action. It runs for four years, and in order to start that, you need to have at least five countries 
uh, from the cost full members. Normally networks are starting with much higher number of um, in, uh, initial participants and then it's growing as uh, Bart explained before. Um, the reflection on the, the financial um, support that such an action can, can get, it's about 600,000 euro for over the four year of the lifetime. And as I said, it, uh, it supports research and uh, coordination and capacity building activities. How does it look like? What is it, the structure? As COST is an intergovernmental organization, the COST actions somehow mirror uh, this intergovernmentality. So it has um, uh, a management committee, which has um, a member from each country that are uh, represented in the action. Um, and these management committee members are nominated by the COST um, full members, contact point, uh, national contact points. The management committee is linked to a, a grant holder. There is an, of course, we need a legal um, 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 entity that takes on um, the grant management and with whom the cost association can uh, get into a grant agreement. Um, and then the work um, of the, the researchers uh, work is uh, spent out in different working groups. On this slide, you can see six. Of course, it's not an obligation, obligation to have six working groups. There could be less or more depending on the, on, on the structure and needs of the actions. And there could be also um, horizontal groups that are working for the horizontal uh, needs um, and administration for the, the action, which are the different coordinators, coordinating different activities, uh, networking tool uh, usage, that I will uh, explain a bit later on. Um, and this, uh, in a nutshell, how um, a cost action management or cost action structure uh, can be built up. A cost action is led by um, a chair who is normally um, um, gaining its uh, functions following a democratic elections at the first meeting of the cost action um, management committee meeting. The action chair is uh, supported by a vice, vice chair um, and um, they are um, in contact mainly with the, the cost action, cost association colleagues um, managing the actions. When, you, when we set up a, um, a cost action management committee with um, more than 30 countries on board, of course, there is a need for certain leadership positions, certain positions which will help to to um, to run this machinery, which can be uh, which which help, uh, helps the cost action to um, to get formulated, and also um, that there would be some um, uh, dedicated um, um, positions whereby um, decision making could be supported. There are so-called mandatory leadership positions and the, the chair and the vice chair of the action, the grant awarding coordinator, um, also the working group leaders and the science communication coordinator. Why is it important at this stage? It might be just a triggering um, element for you to get involved in a cost action because uh, one of these positions is obligatory uh, need to be filled in by a country coming from the cost inclusiveness target countries or widening countries or the green countries on the map that you could uh, previously see. And what does this network, this cost action uh, can do? It can use a lot of networking tools. Uh, they can decide which one to use, which year, how to structure their activities. Of course, there we have the management committee meetings for uh, administering the action, but from there, the, all the other um, networking tools, including even the management committee meetings, um, are serving uh, the advancement of the research and um, the research question that the cost action is actually built upon. So from working groups or conferences, uh, there is also the dissemination uh, of the results and the virtual network and the virtual networking grants. And we have shorter mobility tools, um, which provide uh, training schools opportunity or short term scientific missions or exchanges. Uh, the funding offered by cost, um, I was quick, uh, is uh, to be spent on organizing meetings, 
the, those that are organized meetings, they, the, the local organizer can get even an additional support. The funding is uh, covering the travel reimbursement for these meetings um, and um, the daily allowance to support uh, this ex existence by being away. There are also dissemination activities that are supported financially, uh, either in the form of uh, grants, um, for conference grants, uh, or for uh, in online or virtual uh, way or, or on site um, in personal uh, capacity. Here, um, I would like to underline the ITC conference grant which is a conference grant offered for young researchers from the inclusiveness and target countries. And these conference are conferences in this case are not the conferences organized, not only the conferences organized by the cost actions, but conferences related to the topic of a cost action, which could be um, where there is a grant um, um, could be um, applied for depending on the decision on the action. As I said, uh, we also have uh, a mobi uh, mobility schemes, um, which is um, an exchange program, a short term exchange program, uh, whereby um, um, 40,000 euro could be um, okay, could be um, granted to the participants. And it could be also that there is a virtual mobility grant organizing the virtual events that could be also a grant up to uh, 1,500 euro. And where all these activities can take place, uh, of course, uh, they can take place anywhere in a cost full member country that is a uh, participant in an action, but they can also take, take place in near neighbor countries, um, uh, depending also on the, on the decision of, uh, on the action uh, management. Uh, some of the meetings, so the, the, the mobility schemes, they can also be organized in third countries. Um, so out of um, basically out of Europe and the neighborhood, um, whereby the uh, partner from that country has already joined the cost action and offer uh, and provide facilities uh, for these exchanges. As for uh, receiving funding, um, from a cost uh, full member country, any activities or any um, involvement in the cost action is eligible to be reimbursed. But reimbursement is also a decision um, that which, act which activity uh, and which uh, participant or how many participants or, um, or what. It is also a decision of the action uh, management committee depending on their available budget. Um, we have um, a dedicated, uh, they were, some of the measures were already uh, uh, presented to you um, because we have a dedicated uh, policy towards the inclusiveness target countries. And for that, um, to implement that, we have dedicated measures for in, uh, supporting or boosting the participation. There are some which we uh, perform at the cost association level, like organizing info days uh, in the countries. And these are normally combined with high level uh, meetings by uh, the visibility of, of cost is raised uh, towards uh, decision makers. In the cost action, as I mentioned, uh, one of the obligatory or mandatory leadership uh, role is uh, obligatory to be filled in by um, a researcher or a participant from an inclusiveness target country, the conference grants for uh, for uh, young researchers, and we have um, some kind of uh, easier financial um, uh, solutions for um, taking on a, a longer um, engagement, like a short-term scientific mission, uh, if the participant is coming from an inclusiveness target country. As Bart mentioned, we have the Cost Academy, uh, which is a, a feature, uh, an activity that we are um, adding to the uh, core business of cost, the cost actions and their um, um, activities. This is a, um, something additional 
where is a leadership program uh, designed for young researchers from inclusiveness target countries who are already approached at the moment when um, the funding decision about the future cost actions uh, are known. There is also the cost action chairs forum, which is uh, a useful and, and uh, um, platform for uh, action chairs to exchange um, uh, and have and learn from each other. Uh, we organize also different kind of uh, trainings under the academy uh, for the different functions fulfilled in the cost actions, like the science communication training or the grant holder workshops. Um, I left last uh, because then I will turn, I think, in some slides uh, to the open call and the proposals, because in the proposal uh, phase, uh, there are also some rules that uh, support the participation from inclusiveness target countries. Um, one is the eligibility rule um, to have external experts from uh, the countries involved and to have the um, inclusiveness policy um, part of the proposals. Yes. So after introducing the, the tool that you can uh, engage with, now the question is how to engage, uh, what are the best ways? So this is a um, slide you already saw, just very quick repetition that, uh, of course, there is a deadline for an open call, uh, as Eva uh, mentioned at the beginning, and I will um, have slides uh, to explain on the call. But if you don't want to wait until October to get engaged with the cost action, you can already join uh, any of the um, existing cost action as a, um, either as a as a working group member or as an ad hoc participant just by using the, the networking tool that they are offering by applying to their grants. And we are very much welcome to you to, to join our expert database uh, and happy to select you as experts to evaluate um, submitted proposals uh, subject to your expertise matching to the expertise required, uh, requested by um, the, the proposal uh, in question. How to join as a, um, in a running action? Of course, you have to do some a little research by your own to find the cost action that is uh, relevant to your field, what is your interest, understand the concept, read the, the memorandum of understanding, which is available uh, for each cost action funded, find the working group or the working groups that you are interested in, and then you can apply it. Uh, there is a, on each working, uh, on each cost action web page, there is an application, uh, the button that says apply, and that uh, launches the application procedure um, for you to uh, to get into uh, the cost action. So this is when you browse the cost action, you'll find uh, the list of them. And uh, then you can also decide if what is the commitment uh, that you can uh, give to the cost action. You can either become a management committee member. In that case, you have to contact your post national coordinator. Um, you can be a working group part, uh, member or participant in a working group. Then you can contact the working uh, group leader and um, launch your uh, application via the website. But as I mentioned, you can be an ad hoc or an, a one off one time participant by applying to the different opportunities that the, the cost actions are opening in different kinds of grants. I think I will because or I will propose uh, provide you the, the, the slides, but as the time is running, I think I will want to focus on a little bit more on the open call because uh, that might be more uh, appealing to you. Uh, this is a one step uh, submission pro um, way to uh, to the cost uh, to, to submit a proposal for a new cost action. You have to be registered in the eCost uh, database in order to be able to submit. Um, you can be a main proposer uh, if you are from a cost full member or, um, or a cooperating uh, member, but you can also be a secondary proposer, so a member of a proposing network. The proposals that you are submitted should focus on um, a research question. They should address uh, scientific research problematics. Uh, they should also explain why networking uh, 
or how the networking will uh, help to solve or, or give answers or, or advance that certain question. Um, they should explain uh, how the how during the activities of the uh, cost action, the excellence and inclusiveness aspects will be taken into account. Um, and of course, they should provide um, a sort of uh, implementation plan with a strong impact. The next collection date is the 23rd of October, uh, which is um, normally now we have for a couple of years uh, always mid-October, second half of October as a as a deadline. But as our call is an open call, if you miss this deadline, it doesn't mean that you are you cannot submit because then it just means that you have to wait a little bit for uh, the next uh, collection date to happen. If you have any question during the preparation of your proposal, you I would advise you to send an email to the open call uh, email address. There are colleagues behind the email address. It's not um, it's at the moment it's not artificial intelligence, but very human that will uh, answer to your questions. And every questions, every question is answered. I know because I'm also getting questions via this uh, that submitted via this email address related to international cooperation. So it's working and it is. Uh, very efficient. And when you receive an, an answer via this email, that is the answer that is the official one. Um, so what you need to know on uh, the application, please read the official announcement on our website. Uh, register in ECOST if you are not yet registered. Um, there is also the, the CESA guidelines. CESA stands for Submission Evaluation uh papam and award <laughs> um and um what is the most important element of your um proposal it will be the technical annex which is a template to be was available for download it's a 15 uh, page document that you where you will describe uh the proposal and your uh, objectives and this is a document whereby um you need one of the the most most difficult uh, eligibility cr uh, criterion should be fully respected and that is uh, to be anonymous on our website you can also watch a video about uh, a tutoring video about uh, how to submit a winning cost proposal which will explain you uh, at least we'll, it will raise the most important points uh, in a nutshell. Uh, before you start reading uh, the longer documents, I would advise you to watch this video because it can already uh, put your mindset for how to prepare the proposal. And then some more concrete um, uh, slides coming uh, on the proposal, of course. So first uh, step is to create a cost account on the e-cost uh, uh, portal and here um, give um, um, clear um, answers and and concrete answers to on your expertise and uh, the expertise uh, required by uh, your proposal um, there are also general information uh, on registration and submission that you um, need to inf uh, read before going to the technical annex to fill in. The proposals have, the proposal preparation or the proposals themselves, they have four uh, main uh, pillars. One is the general features that are the description uh, to be read in the uh, call document. The technical annex, which I already uh, touched upon. There is a description about cost in, uh, about uh, the, uh, the inclusiveness and excellence policy, how you would be addressing it into in your um, uh, activities. And of course, the network of proposers, those that are individuals that are invited to your proposal via the e-cost application. And they will not need to be named in the technical annex. They will be part of your proposal, but the first um, um, evaluation I mean, the first part of the evaluation will only look on the technical annex, uh, whose main points you can see on the slide. And this will be first read by the external experts who will score it without knowing who is uh, being behind the proposal. 
um, the four most the four sections of a of the technical annex is the scientific excellence part, the networking excellence part, the impact, and the implementation. Um, and as I said, it's uh, a downloadable word template and a maximum of fifteen pages that you have to respect when you prepare it, uh, the proposal. And then I think it's important also to uh, just have two words about the cost excellence and inclusiveness policy, which is part of the proposal. It is a policy that addresses three, that has three dimensions, the geographical balance. So it's how the inclusiveness target countries are involved and what are the roles and contribution uh, or what they can uh, take uh, as a result of the, the cost action. The age balance, uh, if young researchers uh, are involved and in what way, what is, of course, again, what is their um, contribution to the action? What is uh, the action aiming? How the action action is aiming to um, to reach out to them? And finally, the gender balance uh, and all the three um, aspects throughout the, the four years of operation of the cost action. Um, I think I will have one or more, one or more slides and then I will uh, finish one is on uh, of course the the four steps of the evaluation which starts with the eligibility um as i said the, the technical annex must be anonymous so it should not have any kind of reference to any um organization activity uh collaboration initiative that could help you that could help or in any way lead the uh, evaluators to identify the partners. There is a requirement to have at least 50 percent of the proposer of the proposing network uh, from inclusiveness target countries. It should the cost actions should add less peaceful purposes. They should uh, be written in English and should uh, uh, follow the format that is required. Um, the submitted proposals following the eligibility check are being uh, evaluated by the external experts, three of them uh, that are reading only the technical annex. Following the evaluation, there is a revision um, uh, moment uh, by the um, um, uh, by experts uh, nominated by the cost um, full uh, members. And of course, these experts and they are not independent. They are uh, not selected from um, the open database, but they are uh, experts nominated by the countries, and of course, their expertise is taken into account uh, in the in into account when uh, the review panels are um, uh, set up. Following their work, there is a selection uh, decision by the scientific committee, and. Last but not least, uh, based on the decision, there is an approval procedure by the cost governance, which is called um, the Committee of Senior Officials. The, net, uh, the evaluation criteria are linked to, of course, to the um, to the main uh, sections or uh, of the the technical annex, and you can see that they are um, the scientific excellence, the networking excellence, and the impact are. Uh, having equal um, uh, weight or equal part of the evaluation and the implementation is an addition, uh, additional um, element which has a, a smaller total marks uh, for, uh, which can achieve a smaller total marks than the previous ones. The total marks that could be awarded is 50 points and the overall threshold that has to be achieved in order to be considered uh, for further uh, evaluation is uh, 34 points, but normally this goes up uh, well in the higher category of the 40s uh, in order to be funded. Before finishing, just one uh, moment on raising your awareness that uh, two weeks ago on the 17th, or three weeks ago on the 70, 27th of March, we organized an online cost info day that was addressing uh, all uh, the cost uh, full members and cooperating member um, research communities and uh, whose recording is available on our YouTube channel. So I advise you also to, to watch it because it gives you further information about the application procedure and the open call. 
Post has also um, wrote its position paper for running up to the next framework program. We would very much encourage you to read it and uh, support it, of course, uh, and make it well known in your research communities. Some additional materials where you can, uh, which you can read, all the links are available. So when you receive the presentation, you can see um, all the communication materials and also the videos uh, that are available uh, for you to get more acquainted with cost. And here I finish and thank you very much for your uh, attention. And if you have questions, I'm happy to answer later on or during the, uh, the round table as well. Thank you so much, both of you, Bart and Kata. I can see that Bart is already active in responding to the questions which are arriving and which are mainly focusing around who can apply. Is it a private person or you really need the kind of affiliation? But uh, I think Bart has really sent all the necessary information so you can even look it up, uh, the detailed rules for this. Uh, there was also one more question. I think it will be very close to the heart of Qatar, who is dealing with third country involvement. And it was about uh, how you can really involve uh, the global countries uh, in addition to South Africa. So how do you reach out to other African or American countries? So Qatar, I, I give you the floor and I will give you some room for rest because I can also, I think, uh, respond to some of the questions which we received in advance. So please, Qatar. Clarify this. This is a very good question. Thank you, Agotan. Thank you to to those that uh, that raised it. Uh, cost does not provide uh, matchmaking or or or, or, or business uh, um, search support. Uh, normally, what happens is that we do um, information events also to third countries about cost and how it works. Um, but according to um, our knowledge, the, the best way to find your partners from third countries is that, of course, to, to reach out from the network uh, to those countries where you would feel that the expertise um, exists uh, to be involved in a cost action. Any country, uh, any researchers affiliated in any country uh, of the world are, are uh, eligible to participate in a cost action. The, the financial um, support differs on de depending on which country um, this uh, third country partner uh, can uh, would come from. Um, but I think the um, yeah the very simple answer is that if you already have your partners from third countries, you can always invite them. If you don't, you will have the network in the cost action that. I'm very sure that there will be connections in some way or another. And if there is, doesn't exist, you can always reach out to the institutions. And if you need any help, of course, we can try to, to also facilitate. But I think that will be your, your really uh, the last option to, to, to be used. I mean, on efficiency ways, it's, it will be the least efficient. But yeah, I encourage you to do so. And, um, Thank, Thank you, Kata. Thank you. So it's also an excellent tool for reaching out to third countries. There was a question which we received in advance that uh, what is the main difference between uh, the framework programs and cost? And I think I can more or less say some uh, words about this. So uh, as it was said, and cost is funding networking and not the research itself. But what is a very big difference also that it's very inclusive and uh, it's even uh, prioritizes the participation of our countries so from the this inclusiveness target countries so in a way we enjoy preference uh, and we should use this more I, for example very much like this idea that in the leadership uh, we have to play a very prominent role uh, somebody also asked if the medical field can be covered i think this was also uh, re responded on that uh, you can really come up with any kind of uh, proposal, so it's completely open for topics. Uh, then it was also asked if uh, informal scientific networks uh, can qualify for funding. Uh, I suppose that <laughs> you have the same rule that you have to belong somewhere, but uh, uh, it's it's a very um, useful uh, Pre uh, work, if you already have a network, then you don't need to find your partners. But if if I don't say it right, then colleagues can uh, correct me, of course. 
Uh, but I would like to ask this uh, question from you: that how you do you select the appropriate topic? So what is uh, important? Uh, I also have an idea, but I would rather leave this to you, Bart or Kata, who wants to come and respond to this. Yeah, I can do it. Um, so, because this is completely bottom up, completely open, um, and every single proposal goes through the evaluation process Kata explained, and then a ranking is made. Um, so points, you get points out of 50. The cutoff mark is around 44, 45. So if you are above, you're mostly uh, sure of funding. Uh, and then uh, there's always a gray zone. Uh, so if we, for example, fund 70 actions, there's a gray zone. Um, maybe 20 actions or proposals scoring 43. Uh, so I mean, then the scientific committee of cost chooses the last three or four cost actions based on excellence and inclusiveness policies. Uh, so they don't, don't look any, they do not look anymore at, uh, let's say the core of the proposal, the research itself, but then they look at excellence and inclusiveness policies. So how are you gonna uh, reach out to, um, to the whole of Europe, how you include uh, young researchers and so on. So that's but we don't have um, a pre-described idea. OK, this year we're going to fund 10 energy actions and 10 uh, medical medical science actions or you no. Know, so it's 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 in one batch we do that. Yeah. But is it useful uh, in a way to have a look at uh, already running actions? Because I can imagine that, uh, let's say, if some areas are already covered, then that's uh, the first option that you rather join a running action or it's not even the case. So can you even come up with a very similar topic that is running at the moment? Yes, in principle, that's possible. Um, but of course, if you know, OK, the action is running, um, they do interesting activities. I feel I can contribute. I, I would go for that option. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But of course, the, you're always free to propose uh, actions. And in the evaluation, um, the running actions or the previous let's say, activities of cost are not taken into account. It's always a standoff. Okay. okay. A standoff, Thank you. Sorry. There was a tricky question about uh, is it possible to fund conferences and meetings that are part of a Horizon project with the cost action? I suppose no. No. <laughs> that would be a bit double funding, no? Yes. <laughs> so that, uh, the answer is no. Yeah, I, I, OK, the Bart even responded. Sorry, sorry. I, I thought this was just a nice, la, nice next question. Uh, then the, does the requirement of application from an affiliated entity not exclude project managers from other fields than main scientific activity of no, the, uh, I don't see now. Yeah, uh, the main scientific activity of an affiliated entity to apply, join the action from different scientific fields. Now, I think the main question is here if uh, project managers can also join uh, uh, an action in a thematic uh, area. Yep. Yes, they they can do so as long as they're expert. I mean, they they can always do so. I mean. Then to have to see if it is a, a very much uh, if it is an a cost action that is really very focused on the research question, how much added value or what is the takeaway for them? But of course, it's not uh, excluded. They can. Mm -hmm. There was also a previous question about uh, activities for doctoral students. Do you have something specific for doctoral students or? More or less, all these uh, services are provided. Uh, there was, I mean, maybe one of these conferences mm -hmm. that was meant for young researchers. Yeah, please, Carla, if you want. No, <laughs> it's just um, no. We don't have anything dedicated uh, to PhD students or doctoral students. What we have is the yeah, indeed the conference grant for young researchers from inclusiveness target countries and young researcher. In cost language, it means, please, but correct me if I'm wrong now because it's been changed recently or updated. Uh, it's a researcher below 40 years, so younger than 40 years. So it also covers the PhD or the doctoral students or not, depending on when you do your doctoral. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. What about Swiss colleagues? Can they join? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> Switzerland is a full member of, of the cost association. Even the UK 
Um, <laughs> yeah, there's no you... there's no Brexit in cost. <laughs> Okay, that, that's very good news. Uh, then uh, I think colleagues are still interested. So if there are certain overlaps, so okay, I suppose the same people can still meet under cost uh, if they are also cooperating in a Horizon project. Yeah, that's sure, not sure. a problem, but that should be a different kind of act activity or, or uh, yeah, that. So I think it's, of course, you can meet people in different settings. It's just not that you are let's say official meeting you can cover from cost funding then i can, i'm afraid this will be again a no so can the budget include paying salaries of coordinators no so um, no. at cost nobody is paid um, to do the work so that's also a difference with some other let's say funding schemes uh, but we we fund your let's say mobility in all kind of ways I think this is what we received up to now. So we also clarified this last question of, from Drashko. I think that uh, so, of course, you can have similar uh, events, but uh, they should be still different. So I think we just finished the first part in the first half of our meeting. And and thank you very much. I don't know if Bart can stay with us. Uh, if not, yeah, sure, the, sure. Ah, you can also stay great. So for the panel, then even better. That's uh, very good news. So then both uh, Bart and Kata can stay with us. So they will also maybe react on uh, what the <clears throat> other colleagues will say in the panel. And now I give the floor to Eva, who will moderate the second part of the meeting. And thank you for the excellent presentations, colleagues. Eva. Yes, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, it was very informative and uh, also quite some questions. So we already have, uh, uh, let's, set, uh, let's say, the, uh, setting the scene behind us. And uh, now let's go into uh, the real practice uh, on, uh, and we will discuss how it is to, to start, how it is to run a cost action. And of course, we, we hope that uh, after um, one hour that we have now for, for this discussion with, uh, with our panelists, you will be more than convinced to, to join. So um, I would like to welcome our four uh, speakers um, that are joining, uh, uh, of course, from our four countries, but, uh, but as you could notice already, participants in general are from, from many others as well. Um, so I'm very happy to have uh, with uh, with us uh, Viktor Gabor Mihuc, and he's a associate professor at the research group of environmental chemistry and bioanalytics at the Institute of Chemistry at Tovos Lorad University from Hungary. Uh, welcome. Uh, then we have Milda uh, Alisauskiene. I'm trying to do my best. Uh, uh, and she's a professor at uh, the Department of Sociology, uh, Faculty of Social, Social Sciences and Vitaus Magnus University um, uh, from Lithuania. And then we have Anna Urbaniak, and she's a postdoc research fellow and a chair of, of a cost action as well at the Department of Sociology at the Jagiellonia University in, in, in Poland. And, and we have, uh, last but not least, uh, Mimi Urbanch, and she's a, a researcher, but also deputy director, head of research office um, at the Research Center of the Slovenian Academy of Sciences and Arts. Uh, so we have uh, uh, different uh, different fields of, of science and, and I'm pretty sure different experiences as well. Uh, so uh, the idea is that, of course, uh, we will follow some uh, prepared already before questions, but uh, you, uh, I mean, all the participants uh, are welcome to also use the chat still and ask your questions to the participants. I will look there as well and, and also uh, try to, to, uh, to balance between the questions that we already have um, and the ones that will come live. Uh, so please uh, feel free to, um, to, 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 to pause them. And uh, we will start with some uh, introductory, let's say, uh, a question to all of you, um, uh, because it's, uh, I think, uh, uh, quite uh, interesting for the, uh, for the participants uh, to, to know what your cost action is about. So that's uh, part number one of the question, uh, very, very briefly. And then um, already you can say um, who initiated it and how was the whole kickoff process uh, uh, organized. So then we will have uh, different experiences um, from, from, from all of you. And I hope our participants will also understand a bit more how to, how to start, basically, a cost action. Uh, so... Um, uh, 
we will start, uh, I think, by uh, with uh, with Milda, if if you don't mind. How was it uh, in your case, please? Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for having me here. Uh, so uh, I will start with the, uh, defining our cost action. Uh, we are now in the third uh, grant uh, period here, and uh, the cost action is entitled Connecting Theory and Practical Issues of Migration and Religious Diversity. And uh, we aim uh, to create the space of interaction for uh, theoreticians, uh, scholars who are working in theoretical fields, uh, for scholars who are conducting applied research, and for practitioners working in the field of migration and management of uh, religious diversity. And uh, uh, we initiated um, this um, action um, based on the assumptions of um, challenges um, uh, posed for, for practitioners after the 2015 uh, Syrian war refugee crisis in uh, Europe. And um, uh, we, uh, we had a, a group of uh, colleagues who started the proposal. And then uh, uh, we actually were not successful first uh, two times, but then the third time we were successful. So we, we, we continued applying, even if we were not successful. We had among us um, colleagues who have been working as reviewers uh, uh, in the cost uh, association, uh, helping to review other applications before we decided to apply. So we had uh, some insights um, uh, from inside how these cost actions, uh, uh, how proposals look like. And uh, uh, what uh, in general, if, uh, if I would be asked to, to say, uh, what is the uh, start is uh, of course the idea, what do you want to do? But then, of course, the second step is uh, create consortium. And uh, consortium is not only people you know, but also to, to um, enroll also other people from your, uh, you know, not from your closest circle, but also from others. And, uh, and uh, sometimes it's uh, ki kind of challenging also to, to get those people um, to, into, the, in, into the circle and to also to join the proposal because it's also a technical issue that everyone who is in the consortium has to join the proposal on the ECOS platform. So I think that's that's it for me. Thank you so much. Uh, in the meantime, I see that Mimi has some technical issues. I hope uh, it's temporary uh, because from, from our side, everything seems to be fine. Um, so in the meantime, I will ask uh, maybe Anna to um, to contribute to to the same question. How how did it start, and so what your cost action is about? Mm, thank you. So my cost action is about participatory approaches with older adults, and it all started with the group of researchers that were willing to contribute to our handbook we edited with Anna Vanka, and based on this huge interest we got for writing this handbook, handbook, people wanted to stay in touch. And we decided that Cost Action might be a really good platform for keeping our connections alive. And we were unsuccessful the first time, but the second time we got the funding and it was very similar. So we, first we had the idea, but it was way easier for us because we already managed to have a large group of people who contributed to the handbook and quite a lot of them were willing to join the Cost Action proposal. OK, in the meantime, I think you also kind of answered the questions in the chat. Uh, are there any SSH actions? Um, uh, and they are. <laughs> we, are we have a representative even in this uh, webinar. So that's um, that's exactly uh, the case. Uh, many, many fields uh, possible, of course, in, in the cost. OK, Victor, uh, let's go maybe to, to Hungary now and uh, ask you about your uh, first uh, uh, actions as it comes to starting cost and also the field of your project. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Eva. I was involved in two cost actions so far, one on indoor air quality and the other one on total reflection X-ray fluorescence spectrometry. 
uh, both uh, um, actions ended. I can talk more about the indoor air quality one because there I was a work group leader. Uh, I was also part of the original proposer uh, proposers because uh, this uh, cost action stemmed from uh, EU uh, research uh, project. A subgroup uh, decided to apply for the indoor air uh, quality related cost action. The topic uh, came out because indoor air research is very underrated. So usually outdoor uh, outdoor air, air uh, measurements are uh, more relevant. It's more regulated. There's much legislation. That's why we uh, thought that it would be nice to continue with this indoor air quality measurements and to come up with a new framework if somebody would like to uh, design an indoor air quality uh, campaign. Also, we were not successful at the first time. We got it for the second time. In the case of the TXRF1, what I mentioned, it was uh, successful for the third time. I think it's also quite a quite a lesson uh, not to give up um, and, and and to try uh, and to to improve uh, your, your your proposal uh, because it seems like it pays off. Uh, at, at, uh, and if you if you try really uh, and and, uh, and try to kind of uh, maybe re uh, reformulate and so on, uh, might be that uh, will be accepted. So so that's good. It was also one very. Uh, I think useful comment from uh, from Milda that uh, if you have someone with experience, like previous experience as an evaluator, that might also, of course, uh, help. So, so that's also something that uh, that uh, you should maybe consider at certain moment. Of course, not the same uh, to to also get this kind of experience. Okay, let's uh, check with Mimi if uh, she can hear us and uh, and and also if her mic is is fine. It used to be okay before. Uh, Mimi, is it okay now? Yes, yes, yes. Somehow, Perfect. in a way, uh, on the way, I didn't hear you anymore. So, <clears throat> hello, everybody. Uh, the, the cost action I'm going to talk about today, it's called NRESH. NRESH stands for European Network for Research Evaluation in the Social Sciences and the Humanities. It started in 2016 and ended in uh, 2020. So the, the main aim was to enable the social sciences and humanities to better demonstrate their true place in academia and society. So what we were focused on, on transparent transparent methods of evaluation on understanding how social sciences and humanities generate knowledge, what kind of scientific and societal interactions are connected with SSH disciplines, and what are the patterns of dissemination of research results. So the action started in 2008. 16. But my personal journey with this action started already in 2013. It was a conference organized by the Lithuanian presidency to the EU uh, called Horizons for the Social Sciences and Humanities. I met some colleagues there, social sciences and humanities colleagues who were part of the Eval Hume Association. It was a network focused on, obviously, social sciences and humanities. So together with the colleagues I met there, we developed a proposal for reflective society call in 2015 Topic 11, Enabling Innovation, Creation, Impact for Social Sciences and Humanities. It was a beautiful proposal. We scored like 14.5, uh, but there was another proposal who scored 15. So you can imagine, and only one proposal was <clears throat> funded. So we didn't give up. And we started developing a proposal for cost action so that the, the, the machine behind all activities were some active members from the Eval Hume Association. So they, they were the engine. And that group already, I mean, it existed for a few years and it was very active in the field of research evaluation and in 2015 they started organizing 
conferences uh, with the topic uh, research evaluation in the social science in humanities. So I was so go back to the cost action. We developed a proposal, we submitted it, and we were successful for the first time. I was part of the uh, core group, and all together <clears throat> at the end, <clears throat> sorry, at the end there was 125 participants from 47 countries and three international partner countries. So that in a nutshell, the way to the cost action. Thank you so much, um, Mimi. And um, in the meantime, we got some follow up question in the chat. Victor already uh, briefly responded. Uh, but uh, if, if anyone of you would like to take the floor and, and, and explain in a bit more detail uh, what exactly happened that uh, the second or the third uh, proposal was accepted uh, um, and uh, maybe some, some, some tips, a um, uh, bit more general, uh, what was in those comments is maybe something that will be useful for our participants. If anyone of you would like to contribute, Anna, Victor? OK, so I maybe just quickly jump onto that what Victor mentioned. Indeed, once you receive the evaluation form, it's very clear which areas of your proposal require improvement. So then by adhering to those comments, it's really easy for us. It was strengthening the link between the main challenge and activities we proposed to translate into short term and long term outputs. OK, Victor, some more comments from your side as well. More or less, Anna covered, I think, okay. everything. Thank you. OK, yeah, that's 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 very useful to have this um, evaluation comments and you can you can follow up. Um, OK, uh, so um, now maybe let's go to uh, a second round of um, of questions. Um, uh, I would like to ask all of you um, what's your impression and how is it going as it comes to cooperation with the partners? How many of them uh, you have? Uh, and um, yeah, that's the main actually goal, of course, to help with networking, with with establishing contacts and so on. So how is it how is it going? And maybe now we will uh, start with uh, with uh, with Victor. OK, thank you very much. Of course, um, it's our uh, cost action on indoor air quality was also huge. And after this uh, indoor air quality cost action, um, we applied for a horizon eu horizon project unfortunately was not uh, uh, successful it was uh, but it was very nice because it it um, uh, just fit our cost action topic fit into the call of the eu horizon it was also on indoor air uh, quality and improvement and um, of course yes uh, we uh, then since then we have applied for another cost action now going also in the same topic but more in the uh, exploring the engineering part of it not only the uh, chemical part and uh, yes um, yes we we have, we have we created a mailing list uh, so we can still uh, do networking we can um, we can share uh, ideas um, uh, research we can do smaller research um, exchanges and um, something like something like that yes we are still still active but this community is i told you it's quite small and uh, that's why we are still uh, active after that also. OK, so it sounds like sustainability is working as well uh, in that sense, and uh, the context is staying. We will also uh, come back to uh, to that point a bit later on. Um, OK, maybe now uh, Mimi, how is in your, uh, your case? How many uh, partners you had then? Yeah, I already told uh, the first part, it was a huge action 125 participants from 37 countries you know our our cost action was really very much interdisciplinary you can imagine talking about evaluation of social sciences and humanities it was an incredible mixture of different researchers uh, policy makers Administ research administrators. So, and it all started, as I told you before, with the Evalhum Association. And when the cost action energy came to the stop, we had so much energy, so much ideas how to go on. So, 
at the end, we thought how to keep the momentum going and achieve synergy between two organizations, between the Eval Home Association and the Enrich Cost Action. So what we did, we merged uh, people from both entities and the international reputation of the NRESH was such that the board decided to continue under the NRESH name. So the Eval Home Association remained an association under the French law, but with the name NRESH. It's very active, very active. I told you before, um, Eval Hum Network started organizing conferences and uh, within one month there is the next RESH conference. It's about research evaluation of social sciences and uh, humanities. And uh, <clears throat> My husband came into my home office and he distracted my <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Sorry, asking me, where's the lunch? Oh, come on. Your wife is a researcher and academician. No lunch <laughs> today. Sorry. Okay. So back to the thread. So um, it's very live. So we keep organizing conferences every two years and we still have some unfinished work from our cost action and uh, besides uh, exactly yesterday we received one acceptance letter for one paper with which we struggled for a very long time so it's very active it's a big network still functioning um, very nice very actively under the umbrella of association without you know um, a project or a real funding, so everybody invests his or her own institutional money to keep the association going. Yeah, okay, okay. That's also uh, very encouraging, I think, for 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 you know developing the the, the contacts, the cooperation, and and uh, finding some other ideas for the future. And um, Anna, um, how is it with you? I know that you are at the beginning of your. Uh, of your project, but uh, will be still interesting how many of you are there and how is it going? Uh, yeah, we indeed just started. So this is our first grant period. We had the kickoff meeting in October. Currently, we have uh, 238 members in working groups and there is really huge interest in joining the network. And uh, as you may imagine, at the beginning, it's rather challenging to co consolidate all the efforts in communication and managing this large group of people. So we're really hoping that it will get much easier in the in coming years. Yeah, and you are the chair, so so that's even more challenging a bit, probably. Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> I'm not going to lie like to everybody. It's a great scheme, but please think it probably will take a bit more effort and time than you anticipate at the beginning. OK, OK. Uh, and Nilda, how is it in your case? Uh, so as I mentioned already, we are in the third grand period year. Uh, we have 38 countries represented in our network and about 250 members have joined the network. Of course, it was uh, challenging in the beginning because we were we started still uh, in the uh, during the, the pandemics and uh, and the first meetings were online and uh, and there were restrictions for traveling. Uh, but uh, I would say that uh, the second grant period uh, year already gave us more opportunities to meet in person and uh, and to see what we can do together. It was also a bit uh, challenging for um, uh, colleagues um, to understand the, the essence of uh, cost uh, funding uh, because we in academia, we are used to this uh, project funding where we are conducting research and, uh, and it is quite clear people are receiving uh, salaries. So uh, with the cost possibilities, it's, uh, it, it takes a while for, for colleagues to, to, to understand. And of course, for me as a chair also, it was a challenge to 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 explain every time that you know we have their net here a networking um, project um, and and it is not not what we are usually used to uh, but of course i would say that um, uh, the it 
very important is that uh, we could have this um, uh, meetings in person and uh, particularly organize uh, um, um, groups of um, early career researchers who meet together in the summer schools and uh, i am uh, I'm, I'm really very happy about this uh, already uh, a group of uh, early career researchers who are um, applying every year to our uh, organized uh, summer schools and they have uh, their own kind of uh, uh, small network uh, where they are uh, developing different ideas and and uh, that we are uh, not only uh, working to sustain uh, this uh, network of researchers working in this field, but that we are also supporting the incoming generation of scholars into this uh, field. And I think this is very, very important uh, aspect in, in the uh, cost funding. Also, I would say that um, the short-term scientific missions that we have uh, um, funded were all uh, also very interesting and and uh, and successful, and um, we can see that uh, uh, people when 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 colleagues are meeting, they are um, creating these uh, bonds uh, which help enable them to to start working on common publications and also on uh, uh, common research projects. So we, we we now know that people are preparing the project proposals in our network. They they there were some submitted the, uh, on the national um, for the national um, grant uh, agencies. Uh, Two, uh, and they were not uh, successful yet, but uh, I know that they are developing further these ideas and and we hope for a for, for better uh, future. OK, thanks. Uh, th thanks a lot. Uh, already you went into the, the possible benefits and also a bit of challenges. We, we will uh, elaborate on that as well uh, a bit a bit further. But let me uh, just now look uh, into the chat. And I think it's um, quite an important uh, question now uh, because uh, when you hear 200 uh, participants, uh, it may be a bit overwhelming. Uh, so the question is, um, how much did your networks uh, grew in the um, in the course of time, and uh, how many participants, partners you had at the at the beginning? Uh, so just to have a bit of an understanding, um, how's the uh, how's the system working in that in that in that way? So, who would like to jump in to that? Uh, maybe Anna, you you were relatively uh, f close to the beginning still. Uh, so, how how was it at the very beginning? Yeah, so I already posted that on the chat that initially the network of proposers, so the consortium you create when you submit the proposal for me, uh, we had twenty nine participants from twenty three countries, and now we have uh, two hundred fifty participants from forty two countries. Yeah, and you said October was the kickoff uh, kick time. Yeah. So, so it's, it's the sixth month of our yeah. action. So it's uh, quite a change already. And how, how was it for the others, Victor? Yes, um, we um, there were 48 original proposers from 17 different countries. And when we finished last year, there were 208 participating scientists from 37 countries. OK, so thank it, it you. Grew, it grew uh, quite a lot. Yeah, but it's also good to know that at the beginning it doesn't have to be uh, like this. Yeah, it's easier to, to to prepare. Milda already also put in the in the chat. I don't know if you want to still uh, jump in. Yes, maybe I, I, I can shortly say that. We, so we had 19 countries and about uh, about uh, 27 uh, people uh, in, in the um, uh, proposal. Uh, and then we we now in the third year we have 38 countries participating and about 250 members. But of course, um, by saying this these member these numbers, I think it's also important important to emphasize that um, uh, we have different level of uh, participation in in all uh, actions, and uh, and there are people who are really very very active and proactive. And there are so-called, uh, we say, sleeping members, uh, which uh, which are there in the lists. They they want to receive all the communication, and this is fine. And um, sometimes um, sometimes the action leaders are 
are wondering if it's okay to have these uh, sleeping members, but I, I feel that uh, uh, I think it's important for for um, the continuation and sustainability of the action because uh, I have also uh, benefited very much from uh, cost academy trainings, meeting other other uh, cost action leaders who who shared that uh, sometimes it happens that this actually the sleeping members become the, the 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 key drivers for sustainability of the action. So I'm um, um, I think it's it's really also important to to add this dimension to to these numbers of of membership. Yeah, it's putting a bit more the thing into the perspective and the context. And um, Mimi, how was it for you? Yeah, we started with 20 people from 16 countries and we grew to 125 participants from 37 countries. At a time when our action was still ongoing, we were very proud of the numbers, but now hearing to my colleagues, uh, our network seems to be a petite comparing to really impressive numbers. But yeah, it was the same, some sleeping or less active numbers. But looking back, you know, with a hindsight, I mean, many members were really active. So mm -hmm. it's not all about numbers. It's more about being active and uh, keeping this activity alive after several years. Mm -hmm. Still, I think this is impressive. And this is something that um, the the program and or the European Commission wants to achieve long term sustainability and we definitely achieve this. Yes, that's 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 true. If you're still uh, cooperating, uh, that's that's really great. Um, OK, let's now maybe um, uh, mm, because it's never easy to run such a such a uh, such a huge group of people you already mentioned some challenges but maybe let's uh, uh try to give uh, to the participants the, the the list of the of the biggest one and then we will of course uh, go a bit more into positive uh, things and the, the huge benefits that you 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 got uh, you're getting from 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 us but like let's be realistic it's also challenging so um if you could like name uh, uh one i mean each of you one uh the biggest challenge that you that you find uh in in putting together the group or um just implementing the the action that would be that would be great and uh milda maybe since you already mentioned something before maybe you could start yeah maybe maybe i can uh, mention the uh, the the challenge uh, that in the beginning when when the action starts uh, and you receive this wonderful news that uh, the the here you are you are successful in in this application and then immediately you see in the ecos platform people arriving to the to the action who are uh, added to the action by national contact points and sometimes uh, really you see uh, that these people are have no um, no academic interest in this uh, action and uh, i think um, for us it was um, it was quite challenging because you have this management committee of people who uh, sometimes they don't have uh, uh, any idea <laughs> about about this particular research? Uh, we have this uh, phenomenon of uh, uh, action tourists who are, uh, you know, joining different uh, actions, and so I think, uh, uh, you know, of course I understand the inclusivity um, idea, and and it is really very nice. But I think uh, that uh, this challenge also might uh, be overcome with more uh, with more cooperation between national coordinators and the um, action leaders. Uh, I know that in some countries they uh, they actually ask uh, action leaders to, um, to 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 communicate beforehand they approve uh, uh, one or another member. But in some countries they don't do that, and these are national uh, peculiarities. 
but um, as an action chair, I would say that it, it's it's more useful for the action if we have this uh, more tight co communication with national uh, coordinators about who is joining. And uh, sometimes really we have very, very um, um, collaborative uh, uh, members of the action rep uh, from one or another country, but they cannot be management committee members because these places have been already filled in by by other people who are who are not so much interested in participating. And then then of course you need to find some other mechanisms how to work out uh, in these kind of situations. But I would say that uh, maybe it, it's a, it, it would be a good idea to rethink uh, this cooperation between national coordinators and uh, and uh, and the action chairs. Thank you so much. So so I think we have not only a challenge, but also a, a mitigating uh, measure to to implement. Uh, thanks uh, thanks for that. Um, that's 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 very very useful. I I would imagine also for our cost association colleagues um, to hear. Um, okay. And um, may I may I yeah. add add this uh, to Milda? For example, after the pandemic, uh, it it was allowed to organize the annual meeting of the management committee online. So we did it on in order to avoid the tourism that you mentioned, and we allocated the money, the funds uh, for work group. For we could organize more work group meetings, smaller meetings, in order to achieve the objectives of each uh, work group. This is uh, one of the things. And in the chat, there was a question. Uh, yes, uh, usually you know that uh, we had to organize also when it was face to face meeting. I also organized one in Budapest at ELTE. So the requirement was to be organized at the university, not not to pay for the rent for the for the for the location. And yes, I, or, I, or, I was involved in ordinary catering and so on, but I also was assisted by one staff. So I, I had a at the financial department, one person who who helped me uh, to to do all these all these administrative things. The workload is mainly for the scientific workload is 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 is, is much higher than this. How to organize an event for 20, 40 people? So it cannot be bigger than 20, 40. If it's, in my opinion, thank you. OK, so it's um, uh, well balanced then somehow. Um, OK, um, any key challenge, Anna, from your side, maybe. Yeah, so from my action, the key challenge was actually my institu my first institution was not very prepared to host it. And I think this is it, what Milda mentioned at the beginning, that there is lack of understanding what this scheme really is. And quite often people might actually expect that they will receive um, salaries and payment as in other schemes. So I think this is one of the main obstacles to make sure that you and your partners and your hosting institution understand what cost action is. Yeah, that's uh, and, very clear. And Victoria, and yeah. So, sorry, yes. so I, I was only work group leader at Milda and Anna, they are chairs. So one of the requirements, mm. maybe it's useful for those who would like to be chairs, that uh, when you organize something and then uh, you, you apply, you have to reimburse the participants. So it, it's very important, crucial for your institute to be able to do the reimbursement in 30 days. Otherwise, it will be, but the chairs, Anna and Milda can, explain more on this I think. Yeah, well, um, let's go also to Mimi and um, ask uh, for a challenge from from your side. So I was only a STSM manager, so I don't know. I've heard a lot about challenges that grant holder faced. So my challenges were not really challenges. It was a very pleasant task. But generally, one of the challenges in implementing the action is this participation on free will. So at the beginning of an idea, the spirit was really high, but then it slowly faded out and disappeared. So we start it with, I mean, with an incredible variety and richness, a number of ideas, what we could or should uh, do, but we didn't uh, end up implementing all of them because we were over ambitious and gradually some people got tired on the way to 
reach the goal. So this was the challenge. This um, how to how to find a balance between this free will of participating of individual researchers or participants and to achieving uh, promised goals and outcomes yeah. and results. Yeah, of course, if we have a long standing action, uh, the spirit has to somehow stay. Um, since we had some challenges and some uh, also some options uh, to, to kind of manage them, maybe Bard or Katalin would like to also react a bit to that. Uh, yeah. So please. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Um, yeah, thank you very much. It's always very interesting to hear uh, testimonies of cost actions, and I think this is the most interesting part of, of uh, cost info day. So we can say uh, we can give rather dry presentations on the rules and, and how to get engaged. But if you hear the real stories of the people involved and um, let's say the benefits they have reached within their cost actions, I think that's uh, very tangible for for people to listen to. Um, of course, the challenges, we hear you, of course, and we are in constant dialogue with, with all of our chairs through, um, well, mainly the science officer. So every cost action has a science officer and an administrative officer. But we also organize, uh, for example, uh, cost action chair fora or, or uh, events in Brussels, for example, cost connect events where we take the time to uh, to try to engage with, with the cost action chairs and to listen to their uh, to their remarks, uh, because, of course, they are the, the, the the best witnesses on what happens within within the cost actions uh, on the MC members nominated by the CNCs. Um, yeah, this is um, something we are very much aware of, um, which we try to change a bit uh, with, with new rules which were implemented um, with Horizon Europe and, and then the main focus uh, to put them on the working groups uh, where let's say the core group of the cost action has much more control on who to invite and who to who to work with. Um, the fact that um, yeah, management committee members, so up to two people, are nominated by the cost national coordinators is a bit of a, let's say an intergovernmental uh, history of, of the cost uh, program, which is still in place. Uh, and and um, I can assure you that changing these rules with 41 members member countries around the table is not easy, uh, but but we hear you and, and uh, we are, let's say, in constant discussion on how to do that. What I also would like to say is that we gather uh, the cost national coordinators uh, twice per year here at COST, and actually it happened this week. Um, so, and I think we had a participation of around 38, 39 countries, so most of the CNCs were here, um, and where we try to give them, um, let's say, good practices on how to nominate people in the action. They discuss with each other what other countries um, do in order to get the right people into the actions. Some countries have um, more strict procedures where you have to really to apply to become an MC member and then you're in if your CV is good uh, uh, and, and your motivation is, is, is good. Uh, others, other countries, and I, I agree, um, are, are a bit more flexible with this. Um, and, and might nominate people who not really fit within the action. And one solution was already given. Um, we see that actions move MC members, uh, or MC meetings, uh, which are in a way very formal meetings um, to an online mode uh, and, and free the budget uh, of not let's say a meeting um, or, or having to spend that to MC meetings to, for example, other meetings with working groups or, or uh, training schools, uh, which is then freed uh, while having the MC meeting online. Um, so th this is, let's say, my take on, on, on this uh, remark on, let's say, the motivation after a few years. Uh, yeah, that's hard to control. Um, and I think there's a very important uh, role for US chair to keep the network alive. But I think as everything in life, everything in the beginning is very exciting, but then <laughs> um, I think things might um, might change in, in, in the course of, of, of the action. And, and I think this also goes in all kinds of directions. I've seen actions who are very active after four years and really want to continue uh, and asking for more money and extensions and uh, <laughs> and so on so this really depends a bit from action to action so um yeah and sleeping members i also noted um yeah and, and for cost really I, I think and that's uh, yeah that's that's the thing for every project or, or even for every job we have uh, you get out what you put in i mean if you're very active and you're really 
um, network and uh, use the opportunity of the tools you have available, uh, you, you will get huge benefits for your personal career, but also for your scientific work. So the time you invest in it, you will get out uh, in terms of, of benefits uh, in, in the long term. And, and that counts for, I think, every everything we do uh, professionally. Uh, so, so also for cost, I would say. I don't know, Kata, if you have to, something to, to add here. I think you already very well um, summarized uh, our responses and that I just can echo that. I think uh, this is a kind of um, very nice moment of our work when meeting with reality and uh, because it also gives us the motivation because, you know, we've been also in this business for a while to continue and to, to, to improve. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot for this uh, immediate feedback. Um, and uh, let me follow up with some uh, benefits now. It was already mentioned uh, by by some of you, um, but I think it's it's uh, it's uh, quite important to have this um, uh, overlook of of what what's uh, what was the best, what what is the best so far that you can see from um, from the cost action. Um, and since the time is slowly running out, um, also um, um, if if you have some uh general uh maybe already tips or some kind of a uh, gold advice uh to 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 the participants how to uh, how to start so so let's uh let's jump into the benefit and uh and some uh, some tip from um uh, from all four of you and uh, yeah maybe mimi uh you could come first please yeah, thank you. So benefits are many. I mean, it was an incredible network and still is. So for the networking opportunities, I developed long-term professional relationships. Uh, probably at this point, it's time to tell you about my professional trajectory. I started as a researcher in human geography, and then after 14 years, I switched to the dark side to research administration, the hated one. So to take over the research office and gradually I took over all the research part of our operation, uh, impact strategy, evaluation, uh, ethics and integrity. So this, this uh, network enabled me to meet colleagues from a very broad perspectives and I could bring all those perspectives back to my uh, office and um, uh, it opened up new research perspectives. Again, I started as a researcher in human geography, but then on route I became an administrator, research manager. I didn't have much time to, to focus on geographical research. And the only way for me doing research was doing research about research, to use my new research to be better as in the position of a deputy director. So I started uh, doing research about impact and evaluation, research integration. So a new research perspective opened up for me, and this was... I think I'm very grateful for this. About leadership skills, I used my already existing leadership skills to uh, to carry out to being STSM manager and then back, of course, experiences I got from the cost action I used back in the office. Of course, the institutional benefit was also, I think, quite huge. I organized one meeting with 50 participants. So it uh, strengthened the visibility of uh, Research Center of the Slovenian Academy of Sciences and Arts. And how to start? It's like starting every EU-funded project. Be active in international community. Have good talks at conferences, not to be a scientific uh, traveler or tourist, but be active, talk smartly, talk to people, and then something will come out eventually. But it's a long run. Uh, run. It's not a short-term perspective. You, you develop 
uh, your abilities and your network in the long run. Thanks a lot. Uh, that's uh, that's very encouraging, I think, and 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 uh, uh, useful to hear. And also your comment about uh, uh, using the opportunity to speak at conferences. I think it's very pertinent. So thanks, thanks a lot, Mimi, Anna. Uh, what's uh, your benefit so far, and 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 a tip? <laughs> Yeah, so I will be very brief. So because I'm a young researcher myself, uh, I think the best benefit for me as a cost action chair is that I actually have access to those training that cost provides. Uh, so this would be the personal gain. And of course, seeing that my cost action can support other younger researchers, this is the most important part for me. OK, any tip uh, still? Any so I would advise uh, maybe in, in terms of uh, of managing the cost actions, what we did and I find it works really great is to mixture the experience. So we have as a working group leaders always a colleague that it's way more experienced and a junior researcher and I think it works wonderful. OK, such a team with mentor and mentee maybe a bit. Uh, that's that's a very good uh, approach as well. Uh, uh, Victor, uh, how would you frame it? A lot of things have been said already and I fully agree with Mimi and with Anna also. Yes, uh, I think uh, you can, after this uh, cost action, your uh, knowledge in the field will be strengthened. And also I would mention like Mimi, the leadership skills, because these, these in Central Eastern Europe, there were no leadership programs. So uh, that's one the other thing. And maybe just one practical thing. So sometimes you think that, that uh, why to do a cost action, you will review a topic and you cannot publish original research papers. But for example, I managed to, found, uh, to find uh, a scientific journal who pub which publishes, that publishes only reviews. And uh, from by the work group that I, that I led, we had the six, seven subgroups and we managed to publish a special issue on, 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 the, on the outcomes on this. So they, we, we converted the report also into papers, review papers, it's true, something mm -hmm. like that. So this is also like a benefit, I think. OK, thanks a lot. I see Jacek raised the hand, but if you could wait a second, we will first go to Milda, um, still with, uh, with the same question, please. Yeah, so talking about benefits, uh, I also would say that there were individual, of course, benefits and to still continue. I mean, the Cost Academy trainings are very, very much uh, helping uh, to understand the essence of this uh, uh, leadership um, position. And of course, this experience of leadership and um, um, trainings, how to uh, negotiate, how to speak to these people, it's, they are very important. Also, individual benefit, I think, the, the extension of network and visibility of you as a scholar, as a researcher in, in Europe. Uh, I think institutional also um, benefit is that we have organized the meetings at our university, PhD summer school. We are preparing a conference, large international conference at our university. People will come from various countries, so this is um, also very important. I think um, important also to emphasize that um, uh, the cost action can be seen as a, as a certain laboratory where you actually can engage with people and find really good partners for your res future research proposals. Because you have a, a perfect opportunity to meet these people, to start working with them before you engage in proposing uh, bigger research projects where there is a need of uh, more engagement. And, you know, sometimes we really don't have this opportunity to to work with those people with whom we start uh, proposing <laughs> bigger research proposals. But in cost action, I think you have a really nice time to to meet these people, to understand, to 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 work on the smaller scale with them and to see how this uh, cooperation uh, can can, um, you know, develop further and and i think this is a really very 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 good um, um opportunity to, to 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 start and to think about the cost action also and i agree also very much with what mimi was saying about this cooperation and networking with with people but uh, i would add also that um, um 
this is really a unique opportunity to know how other people work and to learn if you can work with them further. And yeah, I think also the uh, opportunity for uh, early career investigators is uh, with short term scientific mission with summer schools is also very, very, very helpful. And and um, I would encourage to 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 think of this because this I think uh, this is how we uh, as I also mentioned before, we are contributing to the incoming generation for the for the uh, to the to the research uh, environment. Also, I would say that uh, I, I liked very much uh, uh, recently discussed idea uh, in one uh, uh, cost academy training with uh, senior colleagues who were saying, and and I fully agree with them that uh, uh, cost network is also um, a very nice um, uh, place where we exchange the European values, the values of democracy and human rights. And I think this is also very important to emphasize. Thanks a lot indeed. This is a perfect tool to build a community around the same topics, values and ideas and also to build trust. And this trust is uh, the key to to continuing also with uh, with with other projects, uh, with you know, uh, managing a bit bigger money uh, for research, let's say in Horizon Europe, but also on some other activities. So so I think this is the the the, the thing that it's uh, holding us together for such a long time and 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 having such interest because this is what exactly is is, is the key here. So I, I'm not sure because Jacek's hand is down now. So if you would still like to take the floor, uh, please just speak up. Uh, if that was uh, just by accident, that's that is no problem. Uh, but we are going uh, quite close to our closing time. Uh, so we have two minutes left. Uh, I think the last round was uh, quite a nice summary already. Uh, so uh, only if you have uh, some final final words, uh, then that will be the the, the time or uh, some final questions still, if someone still has something in the chat. Um, but otherwise, yeah, Anna, please. Uh, so I would just like to use this last moment to encourage everyone who are in the meeting. And if you're thinking about submitting the proposal, definitely it's worth it. I think it's really we, we talked about some challenges, but the benefits are way higher than that. Yes, um, that's the key. You always have to invest a bit, but then you have uh, really the, the 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 key benefit that it's ongoing and ongoing way beyond the, the project itself. And Bart, from your side. Oh. I wanted to give a thumbs up, but I pressed raise hand. Ah, okay. I have nothing to okay. add to that. Thanks and you did both. You did both. So he also saw the thumbs up. Okay. Uh, so perfect. Uh, that was a pleasure uh, to 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 have you all here, uh, the cost colleagues and also researchers. Uh, Katalin also would like to intervene. Um, I very much thank you for the. I think that the last moment should have been given to Anna. It's more a technical question uh, because I made some notes about your enthusiastic and and more proactively um, uh, challenging uh, thoughts during while you were speaking because. We are always looking for good quotes for for um, from cost action uh, par uh, participants. So it's just a question: if you can, if you are allowing us, uh, could you agree to for us to use us, or you would prefer to see us in uh, via an email exchange uh, to agree with the quote? Add it, of course, to your name uh, to be used in um, I don't know on social media, maybe mainly. It's from these four speakers, uh, of course, from Milda, Anna, Victor, and and Mimi. I see you mostly nodding, but yeah, I agree. <laughs> thank you. And it's because the meeting is recorded, so we have to. Okay, thank you very much, and sorry for coming in with such a technical comment at the end. Thank you, thank you. Uh, well, we still have one. I encourage, and now we have the result. I still have one question in the chat. Uh, and how do you prepare a budget for the proposal? How do you report cost? I, I'm afraid this is a bit of a longer question, uh, but um, uh, maybe someone would like to jump in uh, for the last one. So very briefly, you don't need to prepare a budget. Uh, and then it's only when you get the information from the cost action that your action was granted the funding, you get the information about the value, and then you work with that really closely with your uh, scientific officer. So it's very much supported and you don't need to worry about it. Well, that's perfect. Okay. 
So again, uh, thank you so much uh, to, to all the speakers uh, for all your contributions and time. And uh, I hope uh, we were all able to convince others to join. And also, you know, big thank you for my, my colleagues from different offices for putting this, uh, this event together. And uh, we will follow up with some emails so the, with the slides and, and uh, link to recording. And if you have any questions, uh, please uh, do not hesitate to turn to us. Thank you so much and have a nice afternoon and weekend as well. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.